Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the business and the silly edition of the news. You can catch the show live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time. Catch everything in the full live drama. Participate in the chats and etc. cetera, et cetera. Let's go ahead and dive on into the business news. First, we have a couple updates. The demand for a fee to use the password app LastPass sparks backlash for clarity. The article didn't do as good of a job at. They weren't, they weren't forcing people to pay for the subscription. They are just forcing you to pay for the subscription if you wanted to use it on multiple device types. You could use it on a several cell phones, but not computers without paying for it. Or you could use it on computers, but not cell phones without paying for it. And so that caused a lot of backlash. It turns out in this time that Bitwarden saw like a 400-fold increase in growth, which is good because... Absolutely, guys. Bitwarden is definitely a better uh, a better service. And I believe that I saw a, a brief note today on Mastodon that they now have a file sharing service as well. So that's actually kind of neat. So uh, there we have it. And this is we covered the article last week about Verizon basically tweeted to turn off 5G because it was consuming too much battery. Not that 5G. Understand? Not that 5G takes more battery power it's that any phone when it's searching for a network will consume a lot more power than when it's not and since there's so few 5g networks it spent all the time searching for networks and was killing the battery in the process so turning off 5g and going back to lte meant that your phone had a lot stronger of a battery life well this week they are doubling down on this and it turns out that Verizon's new version of 4G LTE actually is still better than the 5G version. So why you would spend the extra money to get the 5G phone and the 5G plan and all this kind of stuff, it's pretty much nonsense. I'm not exactly going to be looking into it. So yeah, apparently um, the the upgraded 4G is infinitely better than the, the 5G. So let's see if we can have a look at the chart here and identify what's going on. So here's site one. Um, okay, so um, okay, and I don't know the difference here. There's there's a uh, UWB 5G and there's the DSS 5G, and this is the new 4G. So you can see that other than the uh, the U, uh, UWB 5G, the 4G is pretty much outperforming. It's fairly similar here. So yeah, go ahead and get the go ahead and get the 4G. Definitely better. Of course, they only tested like test one. Dude, they're like 20 feet from each other. What I don't know. Never mind. Never mind. But apparently, once again, we don't need any of this nonsense. Just go ahead and keep your 4G. That's definitely a, a good thing to do. Well, for you guys that do need to use Windows and uh, like the Surface devices, I'm not sure why, but if you do, you actually will now have AMD options in addition to Intel options. So this is actually a pretty good thing. So you guys can get some, some AMD options. No Ryzen Mobile 5000 at this point in time, but you will be able to get them in a variety of different formats. So... Uh, let's see, currently 15th century, um, 15 inch Surface Laptop 3 can be spec with a Ryzen 5 uh, 3580U and Ryzen 7 3780U. They'll be upgrading the AMD processors in the new models, um, but not the Ryzen Mobile 5000. And then, of course, you can still go with the, the Intel ones as well. So you guys looking for Surface devices will have that as an option. And of course, while updating that, they forgot to check, you know, check some basic QA, make sure that printing a document won't crash your entire computer. But that is the latest Windows update snafu. So not always DNS. Sometimes it's the printers. Yes. So if you attempt to print something, eh, it's just going to crash your whole computer. Windows update is wreaking havoc again. This this time it's KB5. Is that... I think that's five zero 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 eight zero two, uh, and that is for newer Windows builds, older ones, 
uh, is KB5000808 or 822. So any one of those will cause, uh, possibly cause a crash in your Windows system when you attempt to patch something. So there you have it. Once again, Windows definitely showing us that, hey, they are masters at breaking their computers. And this is an interesting one. Uh, Want to borrow that ebook from a library? Sorry, Amazon won't let you. So what's going on here now, speaking from somebody in the publishing world, when you publish your books, you can publish to a lot of different places. A lot of authors right now are directly publishing to Amazon and foregoing the other places because it's one place to manage. The majority of your sales are going through Amazon anyway, and you can still push out the distribution, the expanded distribution. The problem with this though, is that Amazon, they want to sell the products. They don't want to lend them out to libraries or things like that. So if you are utilizing Amazon for your books, you may not be able to borrow them if you have a deal exclusively with Amazon. This is why while I do upload to Amazon, I do not do any of the exclusive deals with Amazon, allowing me to use the other places like Ingram to push my books out as well, which will get my books into libraries. And the, really, you don't make a lot of money uh, when a book, when I rent a book out at the library, I think I make, I make anywhere from like three to 15 cents or something if you read my book from the library versus, you know, three or four dollars if you buy it. So that's really the difference. But Amazon is basically going and, you know, not wanting to rent books to libraries. I don't know why specifically. I mean, I guess I understand, but the library has to buy a digital copy for each one that is currently lent out. And so Amazon should still be making some money on it, just not as much. But yeah, they're not really interested in that because that's what Amazon is. They've taken all this time to kill the majority of the book sales. Now that they are the dominating player in that, then, hey, they can go ahead and make all the rules that they want. And our final story in the business section is that Samsung and MasterCard are working on a fingerprint payment card. Aim is to add extra security and reduce physical contact points. I'm not a huge fan of this. I don't really want my cards with uh, bio IDs on them. I don't want them with the RF frequencies either. Uh, chips, I'm, I'm, I don't care if it has the chip or not. The, the chip was just an extra form of security, all, all things uh, being said at the end. But this, I just don't want biometrics on this. I don't want them to get the card and be like, all right, now that you have your card, go ahead and log in with your app and scan this information in and we're gonna upload the picture of your thumbnail up to the app and we'll go ahead and, and do that. And uh, no, 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 no. And so you can actually go ahead and uh, you're going to read the article here. Samsung MasterCard teaming up. Um, let's see. They said the cards will adopt a new security chipset from Samsung's LSI business that integrates several key discrete chips rather than using MasterCard's current tech. So the aim is to increase security while decreasing physical contact points as your fingerprint is scanned directly from your own card and not an external point of sale device. However, the card is compatible with MasterCard's authentication tech and can be used as any MasterCard chip or POS terminal. So there we have it, guys. Um, we could start getting cards with biometric markers embedded into them, and that's just an amazingly scary and frightening thing. Well, if you'd like to help support the channel, we do have a series of affiliates. Today we are highlighting A2 Hosting. So this is where I hosted stuff for a long time on A2 Hosting. I've moved over to Linode for my client stuff simply because of uh, licensing fees and the fact that I host so many websites, I could no longer get a better deal on A2. But for single individual sites or other special cases, A2 is still an excellent hosting. They actually pick up the phone and talk to you with people who actually live in your country, and that's an amazing thing. You can actually get up to 72% off if you use my affiliate link tlm.li forward slash a2h well, that will be linked in the description down below so the way these uh, introductory plans work here is you pick up the introductory cost 
And uh, you start with these and then you can buy as much of this as you want up to three years at this rate. And then after that, it gets billed at whatever the standard rate is. So 1099 is the monthly and then it will actually drop down a little bit if you buy you know, six months or, or a year or two or three years. And so there we have it. We have um, a variety of different hosting options from shared uh, reseller VPS or dedicating hosting. So definitely have a look at a 2H for your hosting needs. Now let's have a look over at Sillyville. So Sillyville brought to us from the Christian Post. Once again, another state is trying the impossible. We're going to pass legislator requiring porn filters on mobile devices sold in the state. These misguided politicians need to stop trying to do something involving in tech. Um, too easy to get around it, guys. Uh, this is not the first state. Was it North Carolina or South Carolina tried this as well, um, which was easily defeated? Y you know, if you want to help people, here's what you need to do. You need to pass a law forcing a consumer to be able to access the bootloader and the internal system processes. That's what you need to do. The reason for this is quite simple. If I use the phone so that I can unlock the bootloader, because I can go in there, I can edit the system files, I can add all those blockers myself. You know, I can't get on these nasty sites with my device. So they won't accidentally pop up on my device either because I've edited the system files with massive host files. I'm sure some new one could finagle its way in there somehow. But uh, for the most part, my phone is protected against this stuff. And that's what you need to do. This way, if a parent really de deems that their child having a smartphone is a necessity, uh, they're beyond crazy at that point anyway, but nevertheless, if they do, at least they have the capability of blocking services on that phone that they don't want. So we need to have the ability to edit and customize our phone on a root level. I'm not saying it has to be easy, I'm just saying it has to be possible. So that's the thing, because this legislation, it, this is not going to help. There's too many ways around it. Uh, this is just misguided nonsense coming out going, well, well, we're going to do this. It's for the children. And you don't even know what in the world you're doing. So there we have it. That is silly. Um, Mark Zuckerberg envis envisions a future where you could use AR glasses to teleport in for in-person meetings. So you just put on the AR glasses and then automatically you'll be in the room with your full-fledged life-size avatar. And uh, the, the, the Zuck schmuck will be over here controlling what's going on. And I absolutely love this picture down here. This photograph, guys, represents the real world where we are moving towards. You will notice that all these low-level bottom line society people the working class as it were they're all completely blind to everything in the world everything is fed to them on their own augmented reality they are themselves just the epitome of this is you're seeing what we see and here comes the the social elite the ruling class zuckerberg himself notice he's the only one in this photograph without some stupid thing on his face well that is the world we are getting to guys and you know what i I don't really want to be teleported with VR reality into the meeting room with the people. I got news for you. If you don't want to open up the office, we can do just as good on a call on, please use something like Jitsi rather than Zoom or things like that. Use Jitsi, use Matrix, whatever else. They'll, they'll all support the video calls and stuff. Use that and we can understand the fact that we are interfacing with each other in our own respective offices and actually doing online collaboration without the nonsense of having the childish, ooh, look at the VR. Oh, we're now in the office space together with our lifelike avatars. What is this nonsense? We are a culture of infants, I'm telling you. Well, we, we just can't go to Sillyville without something related to the coof. And so now, apparently, artifacts from the first COVID-19 vaccination in the U.S. are headed to the Smithsonian. Because, Lord forbid, we forget the heavily rushed, highly controversial vaccine, which half of it is made from um, engineered mRNA, and the other half is made from aborted fetuses. 
for a virus that kills the elderly and otherwise doesn't do much else to the population that completely destroyed society, not because of impacts of a virus, but because the stupidity of a government. Great. Let's immortalize this. As long as we put a giant placard up there that says society is stupid, this is the proof. Moving on. Well, iCloud, a bug, locks out a user with the surname of True. Apparently, if your name is True or if your name is false, you will get locked out. I guess it's just True because they didn't have hardening on their system and the database, the, the code will read that last name as a Boolean variable and crash out. <laughs> So iCloud stopped uh, stopped responding. An error has prevented the application from working properly. So <laughs> error type cannot set value true to property last name. Whoops. So yeah, I'm sure they'll get an update on that one, right? So I wonder what happens if your last name is one. <laughs> anyway, so uh, there we have it, guys. There we have it indeed. Well, Sacramento makes uh, do-it-yourself auto repairs illegal. We actually covered this a while ago when the first iteration of this law came down. First iteration of the law came down and basically says, hey, you can't do certain types of work. This one just goes even further. It's, it's weird. So now they've added minor repairs to the new code. So minor adjustments, service and repairs to automobiles or other passenger vehicles. Examples include, but are not limited to, radiator, transmission, muffler, brake repair, lubricant shops, diagnostics, and tune-ups, smog inspection, auto class, uh, auto glass repair and installation, automotive seat covers, reupholstery, tire sales, service, and car washes. So, so sorry, guys. Um, you are no longer allowed to have your uh, cheerleading fundraiser with the car wash station that is now illegal in Sacramento. <laughs> it shall not include body and engine work as defined in major auto repair. So the idea here is they're trying to prevent, you know, everybody and their brother from starting a quasi work at home garage. It's what they're trying to do. The problem, one of the other elements in the law is you're not like you're only allowed to work on your own car. Well, that's a little weird because, you know, I have a friend and he needs some car repairs from time to time. Maybe his brakes aren't working right. And I know how to repair brakes. I have done my brakes on my car for, you know, the last 10 years. I'm still here and I've never had a brake failure. Uh, so in reality, my friend could come over and we could work on the brakes in the car together. You're not allowed to do that. Sorry, no more hanging out with your friend and one of you guys that knows what you're doing, teaching the other guy that does know what you're doing, uh, you're not allowed to do that anymore either. So this is just kind of insane. So I, now you are allowed to change disc brakes. They say uh, more trouble in Las Vegas on restricted parts and tools. Oh, yes. You're allowed to change disc brakes, but the law does not say anything about drum brakes. But you're not allowed to use a socket wrench. Why? Because that's something you find in an automotive shop, not in a common toolbox. I have never seen a common toolbox without a socket wrench in it, people in California. Maybe y'all need to go work on your cars for a weekend or two rather than hiring out somebody on the taxpayer dime to repair your cars. But it's California, so the whole place is falling apart anyway. So basically in their assessment, yes, Sacramento County is turned into one giant HOA. Proponents of the law meant uh, argue it's meant to prevent scammy fly-by-night shops from popping up in residential areas. But so far, mainly personal car owners have felt the weight of the new code. Well, that's exciting. And of course, if we didn't already know it, the DMCA is completely broken. This is one of these uh, DMCA spamming companies that's just trying to basically copyright common things. He is now copywriting individual words like outstanding. The word outstanding is copyrighted according to this guy. And you cannot use the word outstanding in your product review to do so as a violation of his uh, of his copyright, and he is issuing DMCA takedowns of reviews that use the word outstanding. <laughs> yep, DMCA is broken. They are, um, let's see, 
Think Mobile doesn't restrict its searches to long phrases. It identifies shorter combination of words, including verdict. We highly recommend it. And click, uh, click and export. You say this is causing issues. The click and export takedown notice, for example, lists URLs from Adobe.com, Google.com, Microsoft.com that have absolutely nothing to do with software review site. I, you know, as much as I'm not a huge fan of either of those companies, I would really like it if some little copyright troll tries to hit Google, Microsoft, and Adobe at the same time with a copyright takedown for, for the word click and export. I would love to see the full force of the Google, Adobe, and Microsoft lawyers teaming up and smashing a little copyright troll. I, I would I would pay money to see that. That's just glorious. But that's how um, um, how insane DMC is. So yeah, maybe we definitely need some copyright um, <laughs> some copyright uh, changes here. Well, you can help support the channel over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash T-O-M-M. You can head on over there. This supports my three channels, the Linux channel, the writing channel, and the Christian channel as well. So all those are, are there. So with that, folks, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.